In this tutorial, we're going to do five more JavaScript practice exercises for beginners. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to this video where we're going to do some more JavaScript practice exercises where you actually get to have a go at doing the code and then we'll go through a solution together. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for future video updates. Okay, so let's get started with the first exercise. So exercise one is asking you to write a program where we take a, an array of integers and just return the number of the even digits that are in that array. So for example, an, an array of one, two, three, four, five, six should return the number of three because there's three even numbers in that sequence. So go ahead and pause the video now and have a go at that. And when you're ready, come back and we'll go through a solution together. Okay, so I hope you got on all right with that exercise. Um, there are a few ways of doing it. Um, you can, of course, use a for loop to loop through the array and kind of pick out if the number is equal to uh, an even number. And the way you'd actually do that is using the modulus operator. And I'll show you how to do that now. Uh, I'm going to do a solution with a filter function, though, because we can actually filter out all of the uneven numbers. So let's do that with our uh, a function here. So I've just created a basic arrow function which is taking in our array of numbers and then with the value that's passed in I can just say uh, filter which basically uh, takes a function to say what is the expression or what's the uh, rule that should uh, remove any unnecessary values from the array. So uh, in here we'll say each uh, value that gets passed into the array is a, a number. So we basically say, is that number, if we uh, say divide it by two, it, it has it got any remainder left over and any even number should be easily divisible by two. And just to get the even numbers that are left in that array, we can say uh, length. So let's just put this onto one line so we can see all of that. So the percent sign is actually the modulus operator. So we're basically saying the number that's passed into the filter function, if we just divide that by two, if there's any remainder left over, then this would be false. Um, but if it is, if there's no remainder, if it's equal to zero, then we want to actually keep that in the array. So we're actually keeping the even numbers in the array and then just returning that length from the function. So let's test this out with a few examples. Okay, so that original example of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is giving us back uh, 3 in the console. And the second console log uh, where we're passing in 6 2s is actually giving us 6 out. And 10 and 100 are the only even numbers in the last array. So we get a result back of 2 from there. So as I say, this would work perfectly well with a for loop, um, but you can see that there are features available to us, uh, higher order functions like filter, that allow us to do it in a bit of a neater way. So let's move on to exercise two. So for exercise two, uh, you need to write a JavaScript program to find the number of even values again. Uh, so we just want to find out the number of values, but we're actually going to be given a specific number. So it might be like six or 10 uh, passed into a function. And you need to work out how many even numbers there are up to that given number. So if we had uh, five as the number passed into the function, for example, then you've got one, two, three, four, five, which would actually give you two even numbers. So go ahead and pause the video and have a go at this one, and I'll see you in a moment for a possible solution. So for exercise two, we've pretty much got most of the code already because we created a function in exercise one that counts even numbers, but this actually only counts it in a uh, an array. So to complete exercise two, all we really need to do is, given a, a particular number, is generate an array of numbers up to that number. So we'll start off by creating a separate function to do that. And there are lots of clever ways of doing this with different uh, array prototypes like array from and array fill, for example. But I'm just going to use a good old fashioned for loop here uh, just to show that you don't need to do everything all on one line all the time. And it'll make it for the purpose of this uh, function really clear as to what the actual uh, point of the function is. So we've now got a function that will create an array of numbers up to a particular value. Uh, so let's just try that in the console a few times just to see what we get back. Okay, so when you, you 
Okay, so you can see when we call out, we get uh, if we pass in six, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, and same thing for nine as well. Um, so that's doing what it's supposed to do. And now all we need to do really to complete exercise two is just to combine these two functions together uh, to get the end result. So the way I've finally solved exercise two is just in our console log, I've just nested the function calls together. So create array of numbers uh, is generating that array and then passing that back down to the count even numbers function and it's given us the result of three and four which is to be expected for those numbers. So this is a good example of creating reusable code. So count even numbers and create array of numbers, uh, it's very defined as to what they do and they could be used in other parts of your program or indeed other code that you're writing. So let's have a look at exercise three. So for exercise three, you need to write a bit of code to check whether an array that you're given is actually, uh, it's an array of numbers, uh, whether it's actually sorted in ascending order. So you need a way to kind of check if the numbers that are given are actually going up, they're not mixed about or just all descending. So go ahead and write some code for that and we'll come back in a second and go through another solution. Okay, so for exercise three, I created a function and I just said, uh, is it called it is ascending? And that's going to take in an array of numbers. So I should call that array, for example. And what I'm going to do is use a for loop to loop through all of those numbers. And I'll return false from the function if the next number in the array is actually smaller than the previous number. So as you can see for this code, I'm, I'm looping through the entire array uh, one item at a time. And I've got an if statement in there that's basically checking the next item in the array and just seeing, oh, I've actually got that the wrong way around there. So just checking whether the item is smaller than the previous one. So we could have written this the other way around, but we want to make sure that the numbers are all going up. So we're checking the next item in the array and just saying if that's smaller than the, the previous item, then the, the array is not in an ascending order. So we return false from the function. But if we get all the way through the array, uh, we hit that final return statement at the bottom and the is ascending function returns true. So that all seems pretty sound, but let's try it out with a few examples. Okay, so for the first array, they're obviously all in ascending numerical order, so we get a true result back. And if for the second one, because the five in the middle um, obviously breaks that ascending order, so we get false back, so that's obviously hitting the uh, if statement and working okay. And the final one, we've got two sixes at the end, but they're still in numerical order, uh, so we get a true result back. So you probably could have done this in a one-liner, but again, it's a, a case of making the code as clear as you can be to read. Um, so uh, it's pretty obvious what's going on inside that for loop. And there's nothing cryptic in there trying to confuse anyone for the sake of it. Okay, so let's have a look at exercise four. So for exercise four, you need to write a bit of code that finds the largest even number from an array of integers. So we've not only got to find uh, the largest number in an array, but it's only the largest even number. So if we've got a, a larger odd number, we want to discard that. So pause the video now, have a go at this one, and we'll come back in a second and go through an example. Okay, so let's create a function and we'll call it largest even. And this is gonna take uh, an array of numbers again. And within that, you may know of the math.max function, which basically takes uh, uh, some values and gives you back the largest number out of there. Um, but if you want to work that with the arrays, you need to use the ES6 spread operator to make sure that that gets uh, spread out into the array. So if we were to do this now as it is, we'd get the largest number from the array, but obviously we only want to get the largest even number. So if you think back to exercise one where we did our count even numbers, we can actually reuse a bit of code from there by using a filter function on the array. So if we say filter and then the number modulus two is equal to zero, we know it's an even number. So what this will actually do is filter the array uh, and remove any odd numbers and just return an array of even numbers and then pass that into math.max. Let's just put this onto one line for you to see. So that's a fairly reasonable way to uh, find the largest even number. And I'll just go through a few tests just to make sure that's okay.
Okay, so for those three arrays, uh, six is obviously the largest even in the first one. Uh, we have got a large number of 33 in the second lot, but obviously that's odd, so that just gets completely discarded. And finally, uh, we've got 55, which is the largest odd number, but 44 is the largest even one. So that's it for exercise four. Let's move on to our final exercise, exercise five. So this final exercise is asking you to uh, take a string, uh, possibly into a function, and replace the first digit in it, so not the first character, like not in the first position, but the first actual numerical value uh, that occurs in the string, and replace it with the uh, dollar character. So the string will have at least one digit for our purposes, uh, so you can assume there's one in there, but any uh, the, the first one that you do find uh, needs to be replaced. So pause the video one last time and have a go at this one and we'll come back in a second to go through a solution. Okay, so I hope you got on okay with that one. Um, it's a little bit tricky and there's different ways that you can solve this, um, but this is the idea that I came up with. So first of all, let's just uh, create our function and I'll call that replace first digit. And that's going to accept one parameter, which is the string. So if you're familiar with any of the string manipulation uh, tools and methods that you have in JavaScript, uh, you might have come across uh, string replace, uh, which basically replaces a value in that string with something that you provide it with. So how do we tell the replace function uh, to match a digit? Well, we can pass into replace a, a regular expression. And if you're not familiar with regular expressions, uh, it's just a way of matching various bits of text uh, within a string and you define those with uh, two forward slashes. The actual regular expression goes after the first slash. So uh, to match a digit, if we use square brackets and say zero to nine, anything within that range, any numerical value will be matched by that regular expression. So the second argument we need to pass into the replace function is what we actually want to replace that digit with, which as the uh, exercise describes, we want to replace it with a dollar. So I'll just put a few examples up and then I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about how this works. So you can see from the output on the right hand side that the uh, first character in the string is being replaced with a dollar. But you'll notice the second and third strings have got more than one value in there, more than one digit, and only the first one's being replaced. And that's because the uh, regular expression is only matching the first character, that, well, the first digit that it finds. Uh, you can make that global by passing in another option to that. Uh, and after the second slash, if you just put a G for global, if we run that again, You'll see now that any of the digits that are being matched within the string are being replaced with the dollar, um, but that's obviously not what we needed to do for the exercise, so we can remove that. It's just worth showing you how that works. So regular expressions can be quite complex, and there is a shorter way to write this one as well. Uh, we can simplify it by just uh, using a backslash and a D, which uh, means uh, match a digit. And you can see the code still works as before. And if we wanted to do something a bit more complicated, we could build up this regular expression to match digits that occur at a certain position or occur after a certain other se sequence of characters. But luckily for us, this exercise was fairly simple and just wanted us to match the first digit. So there you have it, five more JavaScript practice exercises for beginners. I hope you found those useful to go through some examples. And just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for future video updates. And I'll see you next time.